Hey there, mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 44. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. One of the amazing moms in our decluttering Facebook group named Michelle had this win to share recently. While shopping at a secondhand store this weekend, my daughter was fixated on getting a huge Barbie RV. She ended up saying, actually, I don't think we have space for this in our house, so I don't think it would be a good thing to buy. I felt so relieved that I didn't have to tell her no, because that's what we've been using, the verbiage and the language of decluttering, boundaries, space, homes for things, etc., and she was understanding it on her own. That's so cool, right? So when we start decluttering our homes, heads, and hearts, our family members start to take notice. And even at a young age, kids can understand the why behind decluttering, and it can teach them many important values and life skills. So today, we are going to dive into eight values that decluttering can teach our kids, and they're important reminders for us as well. So what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen, and let's dive into today's episode. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home, calendar, and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. So I recently had the joy of doing a virtual decluttering session with my friend Jessica. She needed help with her kids' books, and in one hour, we were able to make a massive difference. This is what she had to say about our session. My bookshelves were overflowing, not to mention we had books in multiple other locations. And in an hour, I was able to sort and donate an entire trash bag full of books. Having Emily help along the way was so encouraging and motivating to tackle the space that I had been putting off for far too long. I'm so appreciative of the help and my children are now loving our little reading nook. This makes me so incredibly happy. If you are frustrated with the state of your kid's playroom, your arts and crafts materials, your clothing, you name it, and you want a cheerleader who is also going to walk you through exactly what you need to do step by step, let's hop on a short call to see if I can help you. Pretty sure I can, but we just want to make sure, right? (laughs) So you can check out today's show notes for more information. And remember, you can always join in our free decluttering challenges in the Facebook group. Go to tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm to learn more. Okay, mama, I don't know about you, but I am constantly thinking about what values I'm passing down to my kids. We want to launch patient, kind, loving, cooperative children into the world eventually, right? But parenting and guiding our children is incredibly hard. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. (laughs) Maybe you have kids that want to hold on to everything. And if so, you can listen to episode 18 all about what to do about this issue. And you want to show them the value of decluttering, but it seems impossible. We need to make sure we are modeling the behaviors that we want to see in our kids. And this goes for decluttering, right? It means our shopping behaviors, what we're bringing into our home, as well as what we decide to let go of because it's no longer serving us. So when we're modeling a life where experiences are more important than things, where we're living in alignment with the values we say are important to us, even if it goes against the culture around us, there's so much that our children can learn and take with them into adulthood. So today we're going to dive into these eight values that decluttering can teach our kids, because once we see decluttering is more than just getting rid of stuff in our home, but as a learning opportunity for our kids, the experience becomes much more meaningful. Okay, let's start with value number one, generosity. When we know 
what is no longer serving us can be a way to bless others, we can be generous with what we no longer use or need. And kids can embrace this value at a young age by giving their unused toys, books, and clothing to other kids that don't have as much as they do. I love donating to local churches, my kids' preschool, or even my local Buy Nothing group because my kids can see and sometimes even meet the actual people that their donations are helping. They're able to make that connection between generosity of the physical things they have and then translate that into generosity of spirit that allows them to better relate with others around them. So value number two is the other side of that generosity coin, gratitude. And we know as adults that gratitude is so important so that we can remember what is truly important to us, what matters most, and to see the abundance of what we already have. So you can listen to episode 15 to learn more about scarcity and abundance mindset. But when it comes to our kids, when they're less focused on getting the newest, latest, and greatest things, they can be grateful for what they already have. And then they're more likely to be generous, see value number one, with what they no longer need. So it's really a win-win. Okay, value number three is a biggie, the importance of boundaries. Now, as parents, we're always teaching our kids boundaries about things like personal space or how they're treating others, maybe their extracurricular activities, like you can only do one sport a season, for example, their screen time, their finances, and so forth. But by teaching them that there's limited space for physical things is important as well. In their bedrooms, in the playroom, or other areas of the home where they have things, you can designate a certain space for toys, books, stuffed animals, clothes, and so forth. You can listen to episode six all about this. It's called the container concept. They fill that designated space, that designated boundary with what they use and love first. Anything that doesn't fit in that designated space has to be donated or thrown out. Or, pro tip, you can put it in an out of sight, out of mind bin for 30, 60, 90 days to see if they miss it. Boundaries show kids how limits keep them safe and happy, but also give them freedom to make choices within that boundary. Okay, moving right along to value number four on our list, confidence. The prevailing culture, especially in the United States, is that of consumption, of having more, doing more, of being constantly busy, keeping up with the Joneses, and so forth. A simpler, more minimal, and decluttered lifestyle is countercultural. We have to build confidence in the path that we're taking that we know is in alignment with our values rather than constantly comparing ourselves to others. This is so important for kids as they begin to navigate peer relationships and also become familiar with social media to help them gain confidence in living a value aligned life, which becomes increasingly important as they get older. Value number five is similar to confidence, it's courage. Now this means courage to fulfill their dreams and goals because when they declutter their stuff and their calendars, they have the physical space and the time to pursue what matters most. And once they have that space and that time, it really takes courage to live a life that doesn't look like other people's. Kids can learn this by the example that we set, and they can learn that growing in courage comes from step-by-step progress, which is what we are all about here. Okay, number six. This is a value I will likely devote an entire episode to, stewardship. So when we steward something, we are taking responsibility for the management of those resources. And for kids, this can be their physical belongings, It can be money or their resources of time, energy, focus, and attention. Since we live in this culture that values consumption, even at a young age, kids can understand consumption's impact on their lives and they become good stewards of not only what they own, but also good stewards of the earth. Okay, mamas, we have two more values to go. Hopefully you're enjoying these so far. Value number seven is curiosity. When it comes to decluttering, We ask ourselves questions to help us decide what to keep and what to let go of. And you can listen to episodes 19 and 24 to learn more of some of the questions I ask when I'm decluttering. 
And when we're simplifying, it really requires this self-reflection and inquiry instead of taking things at face value, like buying more is good because it makes us feel good. We can be curious and ask questions to understand the why behind what we do. This is the foundation of intentional living. And kids are naturally curious, so we can continue to encourage this in them as they're learning how to ask questions about what they own and as they grow. Okay, and finally, the number eight value that decluttering teaches our kids is self-control. So when it comes to living a clutter-free life, we have to remember that it does not mean deprivation, but it can teach us and our kids to delay gratification rather than getting something just because it's on sale or getting an Amazon package delivered to our house every other day. Self-control is such an important skill for children to learn in this culture of wanting everything now and then having it delivered to our doorstep within minutes. We have to be more mindful about what we consume and bring into our lives. And when we are, we can teach our kids that just because we can have something doesn't mean that we need to buy it. For example, just because their friends are constantly running from activity to activity doesn't mean that their schedule has to be packed. Just because their friends are buying uh, the newest, latest, greatest video game or toy doesn't mean that we need it, right? The needs versus wants. And so this all really helps them to understand that they can choose differently and become better for it. So to recap, when we start decluttering and pursuing a simpler, more minimal lifestyle, our kids are going to take notice. And in the process, we are teaching them eight important values. So let's go ahead and review them. They are generosity, gratitude, importance of boundaries, confidence, courage, stewardship, curiosity, and self-control. Are there any that you'd like to add to the list? If so, hop on over to the free Facebook group at tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm and let's chat about it. Next week, we're going to be talking to my dear friend and coach, Jessica Jackson from the Thriving in Motherhood podcast about the three levels of overwhelm and how we can go from surviving to thriving as moms. I'll see you next week. Bye for now. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact, but 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.